Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Millennium TV Around the World News. This is Ishra Jahan with the top stories. Obama apologizes to MSF President for Kunduz bombing. Video urges Vice President Joe Biden to make 2016 run. David Cameron vows assault on poverty in conference speech. Hurricane Joaquin Obama declares emergency in South Carolina. Oregon shooting survivor escaped by playing dead. Now the details. The U.S. has said the bombing which took place in the Afghan city of Kunduz was a mistake and it was attempting to strike the Taliban. MSF wants the bombing to be investigated as a war crime. Mr. Obama has also apologized to the President of Afghanistan. If it is necessary to hold individuals accountable, that will be done, said White House spokesman Josh Arnest. Mr. Obama expressed his condolences to MSF President Juan Liu, said Mr. Arnest. In the United States, when we make mistakes, we are honest about it. We own up to it, he said. Mr. Arnest also hinted at the possibility of paying victims and their families a Department of Defense policy. He said he could not say legally whether the bombing was a war crime but the U.S. goes to great limits to lend the loss of life of civilians. In a statement, MSF said they received the apology but it was still demanding the International Humanitarian Fact-Finding Commission investigate. MSF said it would not trust internal military inquiries into the bombing. The IHFFC was set up in 1991 under the Geneva Conventions. MSF says the coordinates of the hospital were well known and its bombing could not have been a mistake. A number of inquiries have been ordered by the U.S. Justice Department, the Pentagon, NATO and an American Afghan team. The spot was released by draft Biden, a political action group not directly connected to the vice president. The 92nd ad mixtures a speech made by Biden about overcoming personal tragedy with Biden family photos called My Redemption. It ends with the appeal Joe Run. Supporters have encouraged Mr. Biden to challenge fellow Democrat Hillary Clinton for the Democratic nomination as Mrs. Clinton's poll numbers have declined. However, the 72-year-old Delaware native has questioned whether he has emotional energy to run after the death of his son Bill in May. Others say by entering the race solid, Mr. Biden may not be able to rally enough financial support to mount an effective campaign. The Prime Minister who will stand down before the next election said he wanted to tackle deep social problems and boost social mobility. He also announced dramatic planning reforms to increase home ownership and he launched a broadside at Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn accusing him of having a Britain-hating ideology. Mr. Cameron said he wanted his time in power to be remembered as a defining decade of our country, the turnaround decade, one which people will look back on and say that's the time when the tide turned, when people no longer felt the current going against them but working with them. In his speech, Mr. Cameron appealed to the center ground of British politics with a long section on equality and say the conservatives could keep our head as Labour lose theirs. Britain has the lowest social mobility in the developed world, Mr. Cameron said. Here, the salary you earn is more linked to what your father got paid in any other major country, he said. I'm sorry for us conservatives, the party of aspiration, we cannot accept that. It has been raining for much of the week, but a weather system connected to Hurricane Joaquin in the Caribbean is expected to make the situation worse. It is regaining strength and has been reclassified as a Category 4 storm. Joaquin, currently off the Bahamas, has winds of up to 155 miles per hour. The storm is not expected to hit the eastern U.S., but the moisture associated with it is contributing to the heavy rainfall, particularly in South Carolina. The U.S. National Weather Service says parts of the state could see over 15 inches of rain by Sunday evening. In the historic city center of Charleston, many streets have been closed and sandbags have been piled up to keep floodwaters out. Where we normally are dealing with flooding for a few hours, we are dealing with it in days here, Charleston Police Chief Craig Mullen told the Associated Press News Agency. The emergency declared by President Obama meant state and local authorities can receive federal help to deal with the flooding. On Thursday, a cargo ship named El Faro went missing after sailing through Hurricane Joaquin off the Bahamas. Randy Scroggin said the attacker ignored his daughter Lacey because she was covered by the body and blood of another victim. Instead, the gunman shot dead another student. Nine people were killed in the shooting at a community college in Oregon. The gunman Chris Harper Marcer, 26, shot himself dead after exchanging fire with police. The victims ranged in age from 18 to 67. 
age were students while the oldest was a teacher. Mr. Scroggins, a pastor, said he was indebted to the family of 20-year-old Trevin and Spock, who was shot after Mercer passed over his daughter. I'll say thank you for giving birth to the one that saved my baby. Mr. Scroggins also said his daughter told him Mercer had spared one student to deliver a message to the authorities. Other students' relatives have backed up the account. Bonnie's son, mother of Shiani Fitzgerald, said she was told by her 16-year-old daughter the gunman told a classmate they were going to be the lucky one. It is unclear when Mercer carried out the killings. The authorities have not released the contents of notes left by him. The PM told the BBC's Andrew Marshall the cuts were part of the wider reforms that would leave people better off. The changes we have put forward are right and they come with high pay and lower taxes, he argued. But critics including ex-Tory Minister David Willett say millions of working families will be left out of pocket. More than 3 million low-paid workers will be told just before Christmas how much they will lose from the changes to tax credits. Former Conservative Minister David Willits has urged Mr. Cameron and Chancellor George Osborne to look again at the changes, a view supported by Labour MP Frank Field and Conservative MP Boris Johnson. The Institute for Fiscal Studies has warned it is arithmetically impossible for nobody to lose out under the changes, while another think tank, the Resolution Foundation, said more than a million households will lose an average of £1,350 a year. Three elderly people drowned when their retirement home near the city of Antibes was inundated with flood water. Others died trapped in their cars in tunnels and underground car parks in the water's rules. French President Francois Hollande announced a state of natural disaster in the affected region. He thanked rescuers and expressed the solidarity of the nation. Mr. Hollande offered condolences as he visited the retirement home in the town of Biot and urged residents in the region to remain cautious, saying it's not over. In a moment with the headlines here. Israel killed in Jerusalem, Palestinians banned from the Old City. <music> Afghan conflict, MSF staff leave bombed Kunduz Hospital. <music> UK drone fled to double in flight against IS, says PM. <music> Lavrov Russian strikes in Syria only targeting IS Isle. <music> PM President wish success of World Habitat Day. Viewers, let's move to the next news. Police have now banned Palestinians from East Jerusalem from entering the old city for two days. The latest violence comes two days after an Israeli couple was shot dead in the West Bank. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is to hold emergency talks with security officials on Sunday. The restrictions will stop Palestinians from entering the old city unless they leave there. But Israeli's local business owners and school children will be allowed in. The first stabbing incident took place on Saturday evening just after the end of the Jewish Sabbath, close to Lions Gate in the Old City. The two Israelis killed were Rabbi Nahami Lavi, 41, and the resident of the Old City, as well as 20-year-old Aharon Bennett, who lives in the West Bank settlement. The Palestinian man named as Mohammed Halabi, a 19-year-old law student from a village near Ramallah in the West Bank, attacked Mr. Bennett, his wife, their two-year-old son and baby daughter who were on their way to pray at the Western Wall in Jerusalem's old city, the Israeli foreign minister said in a statement. Rabbi Lavi, a reserve officer in the Israel Defense Forces, was killed as he tried to defend the family, the minister said. Mr. Bennett's wife was seriously wounded while their son suffered minor injuries and the baby was unharmed, it added. At least 19 people, including MSF staff, were killed in the strikes. The charity says some medics are treated wounded people in other clinics in Kunduz. Afghan troops are reported to have recaptured most of the city six days after it was seized by the Taliban. MSF said it was pulling most of its staff out of the area. The MSF hospital is not functional anymore. All critical patients have been referred to other health facilities and no MSF staff are working in our hospital, a spokesman for the Clarity told AFP News Agency. I can't confirm at this stage whether our Kunduz Trauma Center will reopen or not, she added. The medical charity says the hospital was a lifeline for thousands in the city and in northern Afghanistan. A regional doctor who escaped the fighting in the city and is now in Takhar described conditions in the city. There is no doctor, no medicine and no treatment in Kunduz. Jamal Khan told Reuters news agency people are getting killed in the city, but there is nobody to help and take away the dead bodies. About 4,000 of us residents of Kunduz have been forced from our homes. The Prime Minister also told the Sunday Telegraph the UK would spend hundreds of millions of pounds on state-of-the-art equipment for special forces. 
He said it was essential to meet the terrorist threat facing the UK. He was speaking as the Tories gather in Manchester for their party conference. Last month, Mr. Cameron announced that as Arafik operated drone had killed two Britain linked to ISIS in Syria, describing the action as an act of self-defence. He told the Sunday Telegraph that UK would not replace its 10 Ripper drones with twice as many as of a new drone called Protector, capable of flying longer distances and carrying more advanced weapons and equipment. Mr. Cameron said they would keep us safe and would give us the intelligence and information and potentially give us the capacity to hit people who are potentially planning to hit us. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has rejected accusations that Moscow's airstrikes in Syria are aimed at targets other than Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant Group and have hit civilians. The rumors that the target of these airstrikes are not IS Isle positions are unfounded, he told journalists after meeting U.S. counterpart John Kerry in New York on Thursday, adding that he has no data on civilian casualties. So the Arabia demanded that Russia end its military operations against targets in Syria, a Saudi M diplomat said in remarks broadcast by Saudi-owned Al Arabiya television. Speaking at the United Nations in New York on Wednesday, Abdullah al molami said the IS Isle group was not present in the areas that were attacked by Russian jets. The delegations of my country express its profound concern regarding the military operations which Russian forces have carried out in Homs and Hama today, places where IS Isle forces are not present. These attacks led to a number of innocent victims. We demand it stop immediately and not recur. Maulimi said, as for those countries that have claimed recently to join in the fight against ISIS terrorism, they can't do that at the same time as they support the terrorism of the Syrian regime. The German government has not confirmed the new estimate which comes from an internal official report cited by popular Daily Bild. The report warns that services helping refugees will not be able to cope separately as centre-right regional minister put the expected total at 1.2 to 1.5 million for this year. The German government previously estimated the number of asylum claims this year to reach 800,000 to 1 million in total. Many are refugees fleeing in wars in Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan, but there are also many economic migrants from the Balkans, Asia and Africa. The arc of triumph was pulverized by the militants who controlled the city, Al Palmyra activists told AFP News Agency. It is thought to have been built about 2,000 years ago. IS fighters have already destroyed two ancient temples at the site, described by UNESCO as one of the most important cultural centers of the ancient world. The Ark of Triumph was pulverized. IS has destroyed it. Mohammed Hassan Al Homsi, an activist from Palmyra, told AFP on Monday. President M. Abdul Hamid and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina wished all programs of World Habitat Day 2015 a success. In her message, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina urged the development partners to come forward along the public and private initiatives to create planned urbanization in the country. Hoping that the country is turned into a livable habitat for the next generation, the PM said improving living standards for the people through planned housing and urbanization is one of the commitments of the present government. In a separate message, the president said public places like parks, beaches, social places, roads and places adjacent to historic sites are twinkling in the developing nations. He also added that people's access to those places is becoming limited. The president also said urbanization is important, but it must be assured that it doesn't take place in an uncontrolled manner. He said that the nation would be able to ensure plant habitat and urbanization with if everyone's work together. Kunio Hoshi, who worked for a farming project, was attacked in the town of Konya. Islamic State militants say they had carried out the attack. It comes days after an Italian aid worker was murdered in the capital Dhaka in attack also claimed by the jihadist group. The authorities have not verified the claims. Mr. Hosh's body has been taken to a state-run hospital. An investigation is underway. The killing of the Italian man Cesare Tavola prompted the U.S. and U.K. to warn its citizens to be cautious. Attacks on foreigners in Bangladesh are rare. Correspondents say but Islamic violence has surged recently including high-profile attacks on atheist bloggers. Viewers, now the business news. The German Chancellor said on Sunday that the car maker now needed to provide the necessary transparency. It is of course a dramatic event which is not good, Mrs. Merkel said, but I think the reputation of German industry is not so shaken that we are no longer considered a good place to do business. VW has admitted that as many as 11 million diesel vehicles worldwide were fitted with a so-called defeat device that allowed emissions tests to be rigged. The gadget detected when the car was being tested and switched the engine to a low emission mode. It then turned that mode off when the car was on the road, meaning that it had far higher emissions than permitted. The figure was far lower than 2,5 thousand increase forecast by economists. 
The number of jobs created in July and August were revised down by a combined 59,000. Wall Street opened sharply lower with the Dow Jones and S&P 500 indexes both down about 1.3 percent. However, both indexes later covered to be up about 0.5 percent and 0.6 percent respectively. The poor figures also resulted in a roller coaster ride for the FTSE 100, which ended up with a 0.9% at 6,129.9 points, despite also turning negative in afternoon trading. The Labor Department numbers reinforced fears that the China led global economic slowdown is hitting America's recovery, adding to doubt about whether the Federal Reserve will raise rates before 2016. The number of new jobs for August was cut by 37,000 to 136,000 in sharp contrast by the upward revision expected by economists. The July total was also reduced by 22,000 to 245,000. The bank now expects a growth in the developing East Asia and the Pacific to be 6.5% this year and 6.4% in 2016, down from an earlier forecast of 6.7%. The latest estimate is even lower than the growth of 6.8% last year. Major development banks have recently revised lower their growth forecasts. Last one, the Asian Development Bank had said slowing growth in China would drag down the developing region's growth to 5.8% this year. The International Monetary Fund also flagged in September that slowing growth in the world's second largest economy posed a great threat to the global economy. Developing East Asia's growth is expected to slow because of China's economic rebalancing and the pace of the expected normalization of U.S. policy interest rates, say the World Bank's regional chief economist Shudir Shetty in a statement on Monday. If China's growth were to slow further, the effect would be felt in the rest of the region, especially in countries linked to China through trade, investment and tourism. Viewers, now the sports news. The 58-year-old who previously held a role from 2018 to 2011 succeeds Jacques Mohan Dalmia, who died last month. The first priority is to restore the faith of the fans, said Manohar. There is a grievance that the board is not transparent. It's a perception created that because information does not come out, there is something wrong. Manohar, who will serve a two-year term as head of arguably the most powerful organization in world cricket, has pledged to put the BCCI's constitution expenditure details and balance sheet on its website. He also said the board would appoint an independent ethics officer who would look into cases of conflict of interest involving players and administrators. Monohar, who also promised central contracts for women cricketers, revival of the National Cricket Academy in Bangalore, and financial accountability in the state units. The Nagpur Best Lawyers was the lone candidate and elected at the special general body of the BCCI at its headquarters in Mumbai. The Premier League champions lost 3-1 at home to Southampton, their fourth league defeat in eight games. I want to make it clear, one, I don't run away, said Maureen Ho. Two, if the club want to sack me, they have to sack me because I'm not running away from my responsibilities or my team. Chelsea are 16th in the table, 10 points behind leaders Manchester City, who thrashed Newcastle 6-1. to one. To be champions now is very difficult because of the distance is considerable, Maureen Ho told Sky Reports. To be champions now is very difficult because the distance is considerable, Maureen Ho told Sky Sports. But I am more than convinced that we will finish in the top four and when the season is so bad, if you finish in the top four, it is okay. Third, and I think there is even more important than the first and second, it is a crucial moment in the history of this club. You know why? Because if they sack me, they sack the best manager this club had. Members of FIFA's ethics committees have recommended the sanction after the Swiss Attorney General opened criminal proceedings against the 79-year-old. He is accused of signing a contract unfavorable to football's governing body and making a disloyal payment to UEFA President Michael Platini. Blatter denies any wrongdoing and his lawyer said he had not been notified of any action. European football's chief Platini, who wants to succeed Blatter, has said the payment was valid compensation from his time working under the Swiss more than nine years ago. The investigative chamber of FIFA's ethics committee has requested the ban and a final decision is likely to be made on Thursday by Hans Joachim Eckhart, the head of FIFA's ethics at Educatory Chamber. Former India cricketer and opener Navzod Singh Sidhu has been hospitalized in New Delhi after he developed a clot in his vein. However, his condition is reported to be stable. Mr. Navzod Singh Sidhu was admitted to Intraprostha Apollo Hospitals, Delhi, today evening with acute deep vein thrombosis. This is a life threatening condition. If not treated on time, Mr. Sidhu has been put on blood thinners and has been recovering well. His condition is said to be stable as of now and a statement issued by Intraprostha Apollo Hospitals authorities. DVD is caused by a blood clot in deep vein which hinders the normal blood flow. The symptoms may include swelling, pain, and tenderness often in the legs. However, Sidhu who tweeted about his condition and said all was well. Viewers, let's have a look at Millennium TV around the world news recap. 
Obama apologizes to MSF president for Kunduz bombing. Video urges Vice President Joe Biden to make 2016 run. David Cameron vows assault on poverty in conference speech. Hurricane Joaquin Obama declares emergency in South Carolina. Oregon shooting survivors escaped by playing dead. You are up to date with the top stories here so far on Millennium TV and don't forget to log in to www.millenniumtv.net. Thank you and stay with Millennium TV. Allah Hafiz.